welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. I finally got my Majon A3 Stormtrooper and of the Majon A1, A2, and A3, which is best? And how do they compare to the original Pilot Vanishing Point? Let's get after it right now. So I have a couple of packages here from China to unbox for you today, and one from Majon, I think. Well, here it is, January 2nd, and they're here. I think I know what this one is. This one is the Majon. Yeah, this is one Majon. This is the A3, and I was really looking forward to making a video review of this pen because uh, it looks so much like a Stormtrooper. I was going to do a Star Wars theme thing. I quite like this little signature down the side. It's a lot heavier than I expected it to be. I thought it was going to be more plasticky. But uh, it has this turn knob release. And the clip is back here in the middle so it doesn't interfere. But that's very slick. So maybe the matte version won't be as slick. But we'll have to try out that nib and see whether it's... Uh, as awful as the other ones have been. That's the Majon A3. I'll show the parts and features of this pen, some size comparisons and measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And then I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. I've been waiting for this pen since the end of November. The first one I ordered was sent to Halifax by mistake and then returned to China. And this one took weeks to arrive as well. So I'm about a month behind the game here. But it's here now, and I'm anxious to compare it to its predecessors, the A1 and the A2, as well as to the Pilot Vanishing Point. In this case, it's my wife's Pilot Decimo. I have to say that I was intrigued by the size and girth of the A3, as I find the A1 and A2 a little bit too slim. I know the A3 is supposed to be a clone of the Pilot Vanishing Point LS, but they made one significant change from the LS, and that's the clip. Instead of a clip similar to the LS and the A1 and the A2, the A3 has a removable clip in the middle of the body of the pen. This gets it totally out of the way of your grip, and it's removable, so if you don't like it, you can just pull it off. And because there's a small tab locator right there uh, for that clip, that acts as a bit of a roll stop, as does the tab on the knock release. But unfortunately, the clip is useless. It makes the pen sit halfway out of your pocket. That is, at least if you can get it clipped into your pocket, because this clip is so incredibly stiff, it just doesn't work on anything. If Majon would make at least a fine and a medium nib for these Pilot VP knockoffs, they would be much, much more popular. As it is, the A1, A2, and A3 only come with extra fine steel nibs, and the first three that I had, two A1s and one A2, were not pleasant. The first one leaked like a White House staffer, and I threw it in the bin. President Screw! Ah! I told you never to call me on this wall. This is an unlisted wall. I've only used a Pilot 18 karat gold stub in all of my Majons. I just swap it around. Wynn uses the EF that came with the A2 and likes it okay. So when the A3 came, I wanted to try the Pilot nib immediately. A viewer warned me during one of my live streams to be careful of placing the Pilot unit in the A3. So I was cautious, but I haven't found there to be an issue at all with compatibility. But I did want to try out the extra fine nib that came with the pen, so I inked it up, and guess what? It's the worst yet. I decided to use my patented ink acquiring mine seven strokes method on it to get it to write wetter. I'll show you what I did during the writing sample. So let's look at this pen. Let's start with the business end. The front of the pen, in fact the entire pen, is identical in dimensions to the Pilot Vanishing Point LS, LS standing for Luxury Silent. And you can see how it differs from both the A1 and the A2 having the clip attached, and the A2 is slightly shorter. The A1 can be had as a clipless model as well. I think Majon missed an opportunity to call the clipless A1 the CC for capless clipless. The nose cone of the A3 is powder coated black metal, and you can see how that door opens and closes smoothly with the operation of that knock. 
and the operation is much more silent and smooth than the A1. Let's listen to it. The front portion of the pen is hard, smooth, white enamel over metal and tapers up to the clip. Let's remove that clip. I actually like the look of the A3 without the clip. The front and back are separated by a black coated metal ring that has Magon written on it twice. The rear portion of the pen tapers slightly towards the knock ring and knock, which are both black enamel coated metal and Magon is silkscreen painted in cursive script on the side of the rear section. I like it. The knock release collar is ridged and has a thumb tab so that right-handed users can use it easily. Lefties, well, tough luck, as always. The rear section unscrews from the front section and the nib unit slides out. This is completely compatible with Pilot nib units. I have the included converter installed here, but it does come with a useful little package that contains an empty cartridge with a stopper, a little eyedropper, and an empty cartridge with the chrome cartridge protector that you use when you're using cartridges. The cartridges are identical to the Pilot cartridges, so you can use Pilot cartridges with this pen. And you can also now purchase Pilot Hiroshizuku inks in cartridges. So if you don't like the boring pilot inks, you can get your favorite Orochizuku colors in cartridge form. The converter that comes with the A3 is superior to the Pilot Con 40 converter that comes with the Pilot Vanishing Point because unlike the Con 40, the Magon converter can be disassembled and cleaned easily. But they take the same amount of ink, 0.7 milliliters. And the first thing I wanted to do when I got one of these Magon converters was to see if it would fit in my favorite Pilot fountain pen, the Pilot E95S. And happily, it does. You still can't see your ink levels, but it's better than syringe filling a cartridge. The Pilot LS will set you back about $480 US and comes in three colors, black, blue, and burgundy, in three nib sizes of 18 karat gold nibs, fine, medium, or broad. Whereas this Magon A3 sells for about $30 US, has one nib option, extra fine, and comes in four finishes. Black and white, white and black, black and white, and white and black. Come forth, come forth! Wanna call for some backup? Get some black and whites in here right away! I'll tell you, these snot-nosed teenage hoods, you got no respect for authority and law and order! So that's this Stormtrooper model, white with black trim, the all-black, and white and black with chrome trim. I bought this pen on eBay for about 30 bucks. And now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Magon A3 Stormtrooper with a Magon A1 in black, a Magon A1 in snakeskin silver, a Magon A2, and a Pilot Decimo. Now let's hear them extended. And there they are extended. And the A3 really is much fatter in the hand than any of these. And I really like the feel. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine, 90 GSM paper, and this is the Magon A3. Now, when I first inked this nib, this is what it wrote like. It was incredibly dry and thin. You can see, dry as dust. It was smooth with a lot of feedback, very unpleasant to write with, very stiff. And I wrote with it for a bit, and I thought, I can't write with this pen this dry. So I decided to try my patented Professor Doug's Ink Acquiring Minds seven strokes to inky happiness technique on this nib. So there, I pushed it one, two, three, four, five, only six times, but that was the magic because I sprung the nib. Out of order! Even in the future nothing works! And it didn't write at all. So I had to do Professor Doug's Inquiring Minds cover your ass because you broke the damn pen quick fix technique on the pen. Knock on my door! Knock next time! Yes, sir! Now it writes, and let's check it out now. This is the Magon A3 Stormtrooper. That's my nickname for it. My lord. Stormtrooper. 
My lord? Yep. My lord? <sighs> Stormtrooper. My lord. Stormtrooper. My lord? Stormtrooper. My lord. Stormtrooper. My lord. Stormtrooper. Stormtrooper. My lord. Stormtrooper. 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 My lord. Go yourself. Who is that? And it has an extra fine steel nib. Let's check the wetness now. It's a lot wetter. And it still has the feedback. It's smooth on the edge of scratchy. Lots of feedback. But a lot juicier. And the ink is Leonardo Black. As to line variation, well, there's none to be had unless you want to spring the nib, which you don't want to do. And the nib makes a 0 0.2 millimeter line, which is a Western extra, extra, extra fine triple X. It was actually banned in Boston. Aren't you a little hairy for a stormtrooper? Huh? I'm just kidding. Or a uh, Japanese extra, extra fine on my Richard Bender line width chart, which you can find linked in the description below. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing. Well, it's just about the same, just a bit scratchier. And for some quick writing. Yeah, no issues keeping up now. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, I love the look. I love the thickness and the silent mechanism. By the way, if you don't like pressing that knock, you can also turn it to extend the nib and retract the nib. I hate that clip, but it can be removed, and I hate the nib. But when I put the Pilot Vanishing Point 18 karat gold black enamel 1.0 stub into it, it is perfection, as you can see from the writing sample. Lots of line variation, beautiful, beautiful writer, and it matches that pen in the black and white perfectly. When I first proposed buying a $100 Pilot nib unit for a Magon A1, it might not have been as good a suggestion since the price difference between an A1 with a pilot nib and just getting a pilot vanishing point was rather slim. It made sense just to shell out for the entire pilot vanishing point. But if you've been lusting after a pilot vanishing point LS, but the price tag of $450 US put a damper on your ardor, imagine A3 with a pilot gold nib comes in at only $130 US, $320 less. And with the money you saved, you could buy a pilot 823. Just a suggestion. As for which of the A1, A2, A3, or Pilot Vanishing Point pens are the best, I think it's rather obvious that, in my opinion, the Magon EF nibs are awful, while the Pilot Gold nibs are sublime. My wife's Pilot Decimo is just gorgeous and smooth as glass. It's too slim for my hand, however, so this Magon A3 with a Pilot nib is perfect for me. Would I pay $450 for a Pilot Vanishing Point LS? Never in a Millennium Pilot Falcon would I do that. Hey, 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 girls. Anyone want to make the Kessel Run? That'd be cool, but we only got 12 parsecs. <laughs> Hop in. But I will be writing with this A3 with the Pilot nib. I haven't been using that nib up to now, but now it's in this pen. This pen will be in my rotation. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, sneak peek unboxing videos, as well as early access to all my videos the moment I upload them. And that just leaves it for me to say thank you. watching and that's all she wrote I made
ਹੈ